All right, so it is, what is it today? It's 7th of November, so I'm a little bit late in doing this video. So this one's mostly gonna be about the first sales last month in October. Uh, just some figures about revenues and expenses and also a few things on what went well and what could have been improved and I guess things that I will change for the next sales. And um, a few little details on kilns, which I've complained about for, I guess, since the start of everything. But it's, I guess, it's been especially bad because of the lockdowns and things here. I mean, everything's kind of going back to normal, so it might be okay. I'll give it some time, but there are plans to basically get a kiln and work on a few other things. Uh, that includes a potential new business, uh, which will be most likely a shared studio with a retail space, which I also get into. So it's gonna be a bit of a long one today. Uh, yeah, so you might want to make a coffee and just come back. And there's also not going to be any like visual presentation in terms of like items and work in progress and stuff because I haven't been making that much in the last, I guess since the last sales, um, I was busy packaging things and then that, a few wholesale orders and things like that. But um, there's not much to show. So feel free to just do this as like a podcast really. So yeah, first let's go into, I'm just looking at my figures. All right. So just a quick, I guess, debriefing on the sales. Um, so basically eight orders plus one wholesale. Uh, for the eight orders, there was 11 units sold. So most people bought one item. Uh, I think there was two orders with two. Uh, and there was 15 units sold for the wholesale order. So it's 15 plates. Um, so that totaled to a thousand and thirty nine dollars in revenue which is not bad. Um, I think that's a good starting point. Um, and considering how small the audience is right now, um, I think the fact that there were sales is a good thing. And I think that gives me a good confident boost. I mean, if, if there was no sales on the shop, I would be pretty devastated. I'll keep going obviously, but it would have been a bit of a, I guess, discouraging kind of moment, but this is a good amount where it's not too much where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do amazing and kind of have that expectation into the next one. Because the first one, it's, it's tricky. Um, you've got a lot of friends and family who will happily support you on the first one. But I think those sales don't really come back as often as, I guess, regular customer, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, and then in terms of expense, so like a, a grand, a grand seems like a decent amount and most people would be like, yeah, that's, you know, a fair amount of money, but let's look at the expense in terms of how much it costs to get to that point. Uh, so materials, a tricky one, just cause it's hard to estimate exactly how much clay, how much glazes I've used, but I would say maybe 30, $40, uh, for the payment system. So I use Stripe through Squarespace and they take, I think it's, 1.6% plus 30 cents per transaction. Uh, so it came to about $23 and packaging came to about $30 and that's an estimate again. So if you've seen my packaging video, um, I think the conclusion was it's about 350 per package in, I guess, average. Um, so times that by eight, it gives me about 28. Um, this doesn't include a wholesale order because I haven't packaged that yet, but I'm gonna deliver that myself. So I won't have to use as many packaging material because you know, shipping is a big one. So shipping, I wanna get into a little bit more. Shipping cost me $196, which the idea was customer would most likely pay for that because it comes from each other. It, there's a shipping fee calculator based on the weight. Um, but what happened was, even though the weight was correct, I thought packaging weight would be okay in terms of like, it's not gonna boost it up that much. But a lot of time what happens is a piece might be exactly a kilo or like 500 grams and the shipping cost is calculated by kind of tiers. So you'll go from zero to 250 gram, 250 gram to 500, 500 to a kilo, a kilo to two, etc. cetera. Um, so when you just go above 500 grams, for example, the cost goes up quite a bit, relatively speaking. So it goes from like $9 to $12 or $13-ish. So often the weight of the item was correct and the order was calculated based on that weight. But because packaging, the boxes, two boxes plus the packaging adds about 300 gram to 500 gram, depending on if it's a small box or the big box. And often that boosts it to the next tier, which means there's an extra four or $5 unaccounted for. While it's good to 
have the customer paying for all that shipping fee, you also don't want it to be that big. So kind of a, a, a balance would be incorporating some of that shipping cost into the price of the pieces and still charge for a smaller shipping fee. So people aren't just getting free shipping and ordering 20 items separately. So they'll be a bit more considerate with their order, maybe get a few more items at once instead of spreading it out. And that means less packaging for me and less shipping costs for me. But in the end, I think what I charged for shipping fee was about $150. So that's about $40 difference. I think it was a little bit more than that. I can't remember exactly, but it mostly came from the two overseas order because bumping up one tier in the overseas order meant about $10 or $15. So, so that's something to keep in mind for the next sales in terms of how I approach the shipping kind of fee. And if I need to bump my individual prices up just a touch, maybe like two, three dollars just to kind of account for that difference. But yeah, overall, it's not too bad. And then I guess web hosting, I'm counting as a sales expense because I need it for all the payment system. I need it for the inventory system. So I'm just including this to give a more overall look into the whole thing. So the total expense for October in terms of the sales alone, this doesn't include things like rent and all that. That's $321, which gave me a net profit of 718 Australian. Um, again, not a bad amount, not going to make a living on it, obviously, but I think it's a really good start. I think it's a, it gives me room to grow and it gives me a little bit of confidence. So with figures out of the way, let's go into more. Everything went well. Everything went smoothly. The launch was good. Uh, a decent amount of interest through, I think, mostly Instagram. So it's... It's a lot of Instagram and kind of marketing or promotion to like stories and things like that. Also like friends of friends and things like that. So that out of the eight orders, five or six were people that we know. And then there were two to three that came from complete, there was two from complete strangers as in like people I haven't interacted with before. So they might follow me on Instagram or on YouTube, but I don't, I haven't had like a relationship with them. Um, there were a couple of orders from other people who I've met on Instagram mostly other potters message and we've had chats before. So it's more for, I guess, support kind of sales. I see it that way. I think all the sales happened in, within the first 48 hours of the launch, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and I looked at my analytics, even though there were people going to the website after that, and there was a decent amount of traffic, there wasn't many interest in the sale. And that could be for two reasons. Um, one, most of the larger items were sold out pretty much right away. Um, and what's left were smaller functional wear like cups and a couple of plates it's mostly cups and maybe bowls yeah cups and bowls and they're quite small so things like this and some rice bowls which the rice bowl didn't sell at all um, which I was kind of surprised because that was like my favorite thing and I think I was very biased towards it because it was the first things that I made in the set that kind of came out right. So that was nine of them. So I thought, you know, that might be something people would buy two or three off at the same time. Turns out people were more interested in the bigger items. So the fastest decorative items, the large bowls. What happened is people are more interested in feature pieces. It, it makes sense to buy one fast or I guess one sculptural piece just to put on the shelf as a decorative because with plates and bowls and functional wares in the kitchen, I guess most people would want the matching set and you want at least two. And with handmade stuff, the prices adds up quite quickly. For example, if I sell a bowl for $30, four of them, that's 120 and that I guess could seem like a lot for functional wear, where home decorative, the brick point for that pricing is a lot higher. Like $60, $70 for an item doesn't seem as expensive, even though you're only getting one thing. So I think my focus on the next, I would say two, three months would be larger items and decoratives. Obviously I still have stock left over from the last sale, so I'm gonna keep that on the shop. So at least there's some smaller things for sale, but yeah, anything that I'm making from now on will be on the medium to larger scale, just to see how that goes. and. If I make less sales, but a higher average price point, I think that's not a bad thing. Um, so in terms of packaging, my packaging system worked quite well. And if you haven't seen the packaging video, feel free to check that out. Just in terms of what I use in more sustainable packaging, everything's recyclable without really compromising on the protection of the item. So everything went according to plan. The packaging didn't take too long. The only thing I would change is I was wrapping things up one at a time and I would second guess myself in terms of if I got the right shipping label for the right box. So next time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep everything open until the shipping label goes on it, then I'll seal it because that way I can be 100% sure that that is the right order. I mean, in the end, I think everything got 
sent correctly. I haven't got any feedback in terms of things went going missing or any damages or any, I guess, shipping mix ups. Uh, the two US orders are still on the way, which I'm a little bit worried about, but that was always going to be the case, especially now with the way the postal system is in the US. So we'll give it a bit more time and see how that goes. Hopefully they get there soon. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the tracking. Not having a kiln has always been an issue. Before I started all this, I thought that's something I could work around. And if it means it's a little bit slow, it's okay. But it's getting to the point where not having kiln just slows things down way too much. Basically, it adds about two weeks of lead time for each order if I was making things to the order. And that means doing a monthly sales is actually really tricky without a kiln because I have to make everything on the first week after the sale, let them dry to bone dry, and then maybe drop it off on week two midway. And if I'm lucky, I can pick up the best fireware a week after, and then that gives me another week and a half to do glaze firing. So that only works if everything worked perfectly. If there's any delay during any of the firing, basically I'll miss the deadline if I'm doing a monthly sell. So that's gonna be tricky. Um, I think at this stage, I might push it into more of a every two months. So the original idea was to have the next sales on the 15th of November. But if I stick to that deadline, I won't have that many pieces to sell. I think I'll get about 15 to 20 pieces at most. And I don't think that's enough. Most of the sales happen within the first two, three days. I want it to be a bit more substantial that way with the momentum I can sell a little bit more I think that's gonna be a better way than spreading things out too much so just because Christmas is coming up I want to do my next sales on the 1st of December and they'll give a bit of time for shipping to get to the customers before Christmas but after that in the foreseeable future I think I'll do a sale every two months unless I get my own kiln and that's that's a big like, I think that's gonna happen. It's just depending on when. So that's basically, I guess in terms of debriefing, that's basically it for the sales. Um, overall, it was a good experience. Everyone seemed happy. I've got a lot of feedback from customers in terms of the presentation and the packaging and the item itself, which is really great to hear. I haven't heard anything bad yet. Um, so fingers crossed everything went well. 